The Senate, the Senate will now consider the proposal from Senator McKim, which is also shown at item 12 on today's order of business. I'll ask senators to remain in their seats or to move out of the chamber quickly so I can identify a group of senators. Is the, pro is the proposal supported? Excellent. Thank you very much. I understand that informal arrangements have been made to allocate specific times to each of the speakers for this debate. With the concurrence of the Senate, I should ask the clerks to set the clock accordingly. I call Senator Steelejohn to move the motion. Uh, thank you, uh, Acting uh, Deputy President. I move the motion. Um, and uh, I do so uh, wanting to begin with a simple statement that makes me extraordinarily proud. Uh, the Australian Greens, from the moment of our inception as a political party, from the moment communities came together um, to uh, combine our efforts in a common purpose called the Australian Greens, have wholeheartedly and without reservation uh, supported the goal of ridding the world of nuclear weapons and prohibiting forever their use. As a Western Australian senator, I'm particularly uh, proud in speaking today to say that I come from a political party, the Greens WA, uh, which has to our name the honour of being that party uh, under which Josephine Valentine uh, served in the Senate, uh, the very first senator to be elected anywhere in the world on an explicit platform of nuclear disarmament. And for those 30 plus years, the Greens have worked uh, with the anti-nuclear campaign movement, uh, with the anti-proliferation movement in Australia and across the world to advance the cause of forever eliminating the potential of a nuclear exchange ending all life on this planet. Now, the Treaty uh, for the Prohibition of Nuclear Weapons is the best international tool we currently have for achieving that urgently needed goal. And it is thanks to the tireless work of campaigners since its creation uh, that many MPs in this parliament and many MPs across the world have proudly put their name um, to supporting that treaty's uh, ratification and their nations signing up to that treaty. And I am extraordinarily proud to say that every single one of my 16 Greens colleagues are open um, about their support and championing of the treaty. Now, this campaign work was so effective that the Prime Minister then opposition leader, Anthony Albanese, uh, championed uh, the ALP's election platform, including an explicit uh, commitment uh, to Australia signing and ratifying the treaty. And he said in 2018, I quote, that nuclear weapons are the most destructive, inhumane, indiscriminate weapons ever created. Today we have an opportunity to take a step towards their elimination. Labor in government will sign and ratify the United Nations Treaty on the Prohibition of Nuclear Weapons. That position has been re-endorsed at each and every subsequent Labor conference. Now, on the 28th of October, as part of the World Disarmament Week, the Australian government will have the opportunity to instruct our representatives at the United Nations to vote yes to vote yes in a General Assembly vote on the question of support for the treaty. And this motion before the Chamber urges the government to take that position, consistent with its party policy, consistent with the views of its leader and consistent with the views uh, of the Foreign Minister, who has expressed uh, in New York recently, and I quote, uh, in speaking of the situation in Ukraine, uh, the Foreign Minister said, Mr Putin's weak and desperate nuclear threats underline the danger of nuclear weapons uh, that they pose to us all and the urgent need to progress nuclear disarmament. 
Well, the opportunity is about to, become, uh, to come before this government for them to vote yes at the General Assembly on the 28th of October. Since coming into office, they have uh, taken only one step uh, towards uh, the ratification of the treaty, the sending of an observer uh, to the first meeting of the parties in Vienna. Now, that was a useful step, but more action is needed in light of the urgency of the issue. Australia must vote yes at the United Nations, and this government must, in line with its policy and platform, sign and ratify the treaty for the prohibition of nuclear weapons. Thank you, Senator Steeldron. Senator Chacon. Thank you very much, Acting Deputy President. Um, I think we can all appreciate the ambition for a world that is free of nuclear weapons. Uh, all of us in this place have been uh, unanimous in our condemnation of Russia's brutal, uh, illegal, unprovoked uh, invasion of Ukraine. And it is incredibly concerning that Russia has threatened to use nuclear weapons against Ukraine. Indeed, the escalation of Russia's invasion is what has in many ways restarted the conversation about nuclear weapons and efforts to disarm. Uh, and recently, uh, Russia deliberately uh, obstructed progress at the 10th review conference of the treaty on the non-proliferation of nuclear weapons. Assistant Minister for Trade, uh, Senator Tim Ayres, led Australia's delegation to the conference in New York and affirmed Australia's strong commitment to the treaty. Uh, after four weeks of negotiations, all parties uh, were ready to agree to a meaningful and balanced uh, outcome across the treaty's three pillars, which are disarmament, the non-proliferation and peaceful uses of nuclear energy. Russia's obstruction made an already difficult um, job unachievable and hindered progress towards a safer world, free of nuclear weapons. Uh, but of course, uh, concern about the proliferation of nuclear weapons is not isolated just to Russia. Uh, just a few days ago, the Prime Minister, uh, Anthony Albanese, and his Japanese counterpart uh, condemned North Korea's ongoing development of nuclear weapons. Nuclear weapons in the hands of states who show no regard for international rules-based order is of particular concern to Australia and our allies. And this brings me to why uh, the government um, uh, cannot support the motion that is before the Senate today, but shares the ambition of the, tra the treaty on the prohibition of weapons. But we must acknowledge the practical barriers that do stand in the way. In order to sign the treaty, we must ensure an effective verification and enforcement architecture. Without this, any treaty isn't worth the paper that it is written on. Uh, but perhaps most importantly, for any nuclear prohibition treaty to be successful and practical, it must achieve universal support. Surely everyone in this place can acknowledge that if Australia's allies prohibited their own nuclear weapons while other states refused, this would be disastrous for our own national security and indeed international peace. To make any practical progress on disarmament, all nuclear weapon states must be involved. Given Russia's deliberate obstruction of efforts towards prohibition and North Korea's disregard for the security of the international community as it developed its own nuclear weapons, it is currently impossible to meet the criteria that would make any treaty on the prohibition of nuclear weapons practical. Of course, this highlights difficulty at the heart of this debate. Nuclear weapons pose a threat to all of us. The world would be a safer place if they were all disarmed. But this threat is precisely why any treaty that does not include all nuclear weapon states cannot be supported. This will be greatly empower those states who maintain their nuclear capabilities and present a growth threat to the international order. I, of course, understand the motivation for this motion and I admire its ambition 
and hope it is one day realised. But the practicalities of achieving a nuclear weapon-free world mean that we cannot support this motion. Senator Payne. Mr Acting Deputy President, and uh, I would also note uh, for the Chamber that this motion pr proposes a significant change to Australia's long-standing position in, relating, in relation to the Treaty on the Prohibition of Nuclear Weapons. The Coalition has, uh, notes that Australia has consistently made clear that the treaty as it stands does not offer a practical path to effective disarmament, nor does it enhance security. Not a single nuclear-possessing state has participated in its negotiation, nor have they signed or ratified the treaty. The treaty will not rid the world of a single nuclear weapon. Australia has always, always considered the NPT, the Treaty on the Non-Proliferation of Nuclear Weapons, which includes nuclear-possessing states as signatories, as the foundation of global non-proliferation and disarmament efforts. What the government would need to explain if it went down the path of changing Australia's consistent position in relation to this treaty is how it will address its limitations uh, for the uh, TPNW, including lack of effective verification and enforcement processes. The government also needs to explain what any change to Australia's position would mean for our alliance with the United States as a nuclear-possessing state, for example. The TPNW is notably different from other treaties which Australia has supported. For example, in relation to the NPT, the International Committee of the Red Cross notes that it can be seen as an agreement between non-nuclear armed states, which surrender the option to develop nuclear weapons, and nuclear armed states, which are obliged to work towards disarming and eliminating nuclear weapons. Secondly, the Comprehensive Test Ban Treaty bans all nuclear test explosions as a practical step towards nuclear disarmament and an effective non-proliferation measure which limits the technological development of nuclear weapons. Australia was not a participant in the TPNW negotiations. Uh, indeed, in October of 2017, the Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade gave evidence to the then Senate Foreign Affairs, Defence and Trade Committee in its supplementary estimates, which said that Australia is committed to a world without nuclear weapons through implementation of the NPT, including Article 6, in a step-by-step -step and verifiable manner. But we will not sign or ratify the ban or the prohibition treaty because we don't regard it as an effective measure to eliminate nuclear weapons. We also take the view that the treaty is fundamentally flawed and risks undermining the NPT. That may reflect the fact that it was negotiated very, very rapidly. It does not involve any of the states that possess nuclear weapons. No such states are likely to join, and it will not eliminate a single nuclear weapon. It does not include viable mechanisms for the elimination or reduction of nuclear weapons or for maintaining a world free of nuclear weapons. I note Senator Ciccone's words are in here this afternoon. In January of last year, the, opposition, the then Labor opposition welcomed the ratification of the treaty, but I do note the conditionality of that statement, which said, we have committed to signing and ratifying the treaty after taking account of the need to ensure an effective verification and enforcement architecture, interaction of the treaty with the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty and achieving universal support. So, Given the government apparently shares the concerns of the opposition regarding the absence of effective verification and enforcement me mechanisms, we would call upon the government to justify any change to the long-standing position Australia has taken on this treaty. Given the complete absence of nuclear-possessing states as parties to the treaty, the opposition would call on the government to explain how it would meet that benchmark of universal support before Australia agreed to sign and ratify the agreement. Given those stated concerns of the Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade that the treaty does risk undermining the very important NPT, we would also call upon a government to guarantee any decision to sign and ratify the TPNW would not have a negative impact on either Australia's or the global commitment to both the NPT and the Comprehensive Test Ban Treaty. We have a strong record on nuclear non-proliferation. We have always welcomed further progress towards the universalisation of the NPT. I would also note what a great pleasure it was to see eminent Australian Dr Robert Floyd elected to lead the Comprehensive Nuclear Test Ban Treaty Organisation as its Executive Secretary in 2021. To note from the media release of the time as the first Executive Secretary elected from the Indo-Pacific, this demonstrated Australia's active commitment to nuclear non-proliferation and disarmament and our practical contribution to multilateral cooperation. 
With its 185 state signatories, the CTBT aims to end nuclear weapons testing worldwide. And I know that Dr Floyd, whom I regard very highly, will play a critical role in supporting the treaty's objectives. There are outstanding questions for any government who would examine the TPNW for ratification, and I have laid those on the table today on behalf of the coalition. Thank you. Senator Pocock. Thank you, Acting Deputy President. It's an incredibly timely um, point in history to reflect on the importance of nuclear disarmament as we look to Putin's war on Ukraine and his threats of nuclear action. As re recently as last month, Putin confronted the world with a grim prospect of nuclear war. His threat was intended for the West and was as plain as it was ugly. Move out of his way or risk nuclear retaliation. This is the power of weapons of mass destruction. They allow the world to be held at ransom while innocent people are murdered. In the wrong hands or in the right hands, in anyone's hands, they are an unwanted blight upon our planet and our shared life together, serving no other purpose than to inspire fear and destroy life. We have only to look at the tragedies of Hiroshima and Nagasaki to understand the consequences of their use. An estimated 80,000 innocent people murdered in mere seconds, with many more to die from radiation in the decades thereafter. This event alone should have led to disarmament. Yet, sadly, there are still almost 13,000 warheads in existence, with some 90 per cent of them concentrated in the hands of just two countries. Nuclear disarmament is needed now more than ever, which is why I wrote to Minister Wong a month ago urging her to sign and ratify the UN Treaty on the Prohibition of Nuclear Weapons. This weekend, Australia has the opportunity to vote in support of the treaty at the UN General Assembly, consistent with commitments made in, in Labor's national platform. The importance of this treaty cannot be underestimated. It is a comprehensive set of prohibitions on participating in any form of nuclear weapon weaponisation. And it's not every day Australians win Nobel Peace Prizes, but the International Campaign to Abolish Nuclear Weapons, ICANN, won the 2017 Nobel Peace Prize for their work to draw attention to the catastrophic humanitarian consequences of any use of nuclear weapons and their groundbreaking efforts to achieve a treaty-based prohibition of such weapons. <laughs> this award was largely unheralded, and it's no surprise given the excuses we're hearing today from the major parties about why this can't be done. Developing, testing, producing, acquiring, possessing, stockpiling, using or even threatening to use nuclear weapons would become prohibited and it should become prohibited. There is no downside to signing and ratifying this agreement. Doing so is in our nation's thank interest. You, it Pocock. is in everyone's interest. Senator Green. Oh, thank you um, very much. I'm very pleased to be speaking on this motion today. Um, and I want to begin by um, also joining with other senators in acknowledging the work of ICANN and the advocates in, um, who have worked tirelessly um, for many years. and. Uh, stomped the halls of this parliament um, many times and I've had the chance to meet with them uh, and to talk about this important work and uh, acknowledge the work that they did was um, did receive a Nobel Prize and I know that it is work that the Labor Party sees as incredibly important and that's why um, we are um, participating in this conversation uh, and we are taking steps um, towards moving um, to you know, nuclear disarmament. We know that it is the most important struggle um, that we are dealing with today. There's no question, no question about the consequences of the use of nuclear weapons um, and the effects that it has on um, not only peace and stability, uh, but also the devastating impacts that we have seen in Japan. Uh, and just this weekend, Prime Minister Albanese and his Japanese counterpart condemned Russia's threat 
to use nuclear weapons against Ukraine as a serious and unacceptable menace to the peace and security of the international community. And they stressed that any use of nuclear weapons would be met with unequivocal international arborium and resolute responses. They also condemned North Korea's ongoing development of nuclear weapons, reiterating their commitment to achieving the complete, verifiable and irreversible dismantlement of all nuclear weapons and other weapons of mass destruction and ballistic missiles of all ranges of North Korea. Well, we understand very acutely that these, the existence of these weapons makes our region less safe. And in the past months, Russia's weak and desperate nuclear threats over its unprovoked immoral war on Ukraine have underlined the danger of nuclear weapons that still pose to all of us around the world. Um, a lot of work has been done um, by this government and particularly by uh, Minister Wong, and, and I um, uh, commend her for her work uh, in this area, and also Assistant Minister for Trade, um, Senator Tim Ayres. Um, Senator Ayres led an Australian delegation to work with other NPT states parties in his capacity as a minister in this portfolio. Um, he was able to deliver Australia's national statement, which affirmed our strong commitment to the NPT and underscored the need to preserve and strengthen the tangible benefits the treaty delivers for all of us. Um, you know, our government is deeply committed to strengthening the non-proliferation regime, which is why we were deeply disappointed that the 10th Review Conference of the NPT did not reach a consensus outcome despite the urgency of the international security environment. Uh, after four weeks of negotiations in New York, all state parties were ready to agree to a meaningful and balanced outcome across the treaty's three pillars, disarmament, non-proliferation and peaceful uses of nuclear energy. Russia deliberately obstructed progress by refusing to compromise on the proposed text. Its actions directly challenged the core tenets of the non-proliferation treaty. Um, Russia's obstruction made an already difficult job unachievable and hindered progress towards a safer world free of nuclear weapons. Uh, despite Russia's opposition and the challenges we face, Australia is committed to fulfilling all of our obligations as non-nuclear weapons state under the NPT, including with the International Atomic Energy Agency. The government shares the ambition of the Treaty on the prohibit Prohibitation of Nuclear Weapons and is committed to engaging constructively to identify possible pathways towards nuclear disarmament. In our two, uh, two, 2021 national platform, one that's been very, that, a national platform that has evolved, can I say, over many years of activism within the Labor Party, uh, from people who are very deeply, uh, de care deeply about this issue um, and have worked incredibly hard to reach um, consensus, have, um, Labor has committed to signing and ratifying the treaty after taking into account the need to ensure effective verification and enforcement architecture. Um, I will say it is incredibly important that Australia is part of this conversation you, and we Senator continue Green. to Your lead. Time has expired. Senator Shrewbridge. Acting Deputy President, we need to ban the bomb. One thing is certain. The longer we permit nuclear weapons stockpiling by governments, the risk of catastrophic nuclear strike grows ever more imminent. Amid growing global instability, we need no reminders of the catastrophic consequences of nuclear weapons. These weapons ignore borders. They ignore humanity. They inflict lasting suffering on people and the planet, which it is impossible to mitigate. They are war crimes. Australia itself has an appalling part, an immoral part, in the nuclear weapons industry. And we need to remember in this debate the, the complicity of the Australian government in the testing of nuclear weapons on the lands of the Pijinjara people in Maralinga the ongoing damage and pain, the poisoning of land and water, the, 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 the destruction of First Nations culture that Australia was a part of in the nuclear weapons industry. And as Russian bombs hit Ukrainian cities and Saudi bombs destroy Yemen, peace has never been so urgent. And one important step, step that Australia could take right now to signal that we are true advocates for peace would be to sign and ratify this treaty. 
There are no safe levels of nuclear weapons, and that is why the Australian government needs to ratify the Treaty on the Prohibition of Nuclear Weapons. Complete elimination of nuclear weapons is the only way, the only way to guarantee they are never used again. And the Treaty on the Prohibition of Nuclear Weapons brings nuclear weapons into the ranks of chemical and biological weapons, as they should be, as weapons of indiscriminate mass destruction prescribed by international law. And the fact that the Australian government is still refusing to sign and ratify this treaty, despite the change of government, despite the promises in opposition, puts us all at increasing risk. And I note Prime Minister Albanese has been a vocal supporter of the treaty. And Labor made pre-election pre -election pledges, and in fact, the Prime Minister, I recall, being photographed holding and endorsing the treaty alongside ICANN. Well, good on him in opposition. But what's happening now? In this debate, the position of Labor is that they will not sign this until there's universal endorsement. Well, well that, that is, that's the, the, the St Augustine line, isn't it? Oh, Lord, give me chastity and continence, but not yet, not ever is that test for Labor, because no international treaty has universal endorsement. So Labor needs to stand up and make good on the promise it took to the election, the promise it made to future generations, the promise it made to peace, to make Australia a global leader. And that would make Australia the first country under the United States' so-called nuclear umbrella to become a state party of the treaty. And as Greens and as my colleague um, Senator Steelejoin pointed out, we are part of a proud history of people-powered resistance to the nuclear industry and peace activism. And together, we thought there is a powerful and growing global anti-nuclear movement. And I want to recognise the advocacy and the activism of those staunch campaigners who fought for decades to bring this treaty into, into action and who continue to stand up for peace and against the nuclear industry. And that includes the amazing work of ICANN, the international campaign to abolish nuclear weapons. People said it couldn't be done, and then they did it. And that's the lesson the Australian government needs to understand. People said to ICANN, you cannot do this, and they did it. But now we need Australia to do its part and to join with Wage Peace, to do, join with the Australian Nuclear Free Alliance. And I also, at this point, want to recognise the courage and the strength and the advocacy of the survivors of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, who have come to Australia on countless times to tell us about the violence, the indiscriminate violence of nuclear weapons. And, and the Australian public has listened. Why won't the Australian government? So now we all need to join together to build the most powerful anti-war movement in history. And we need to stand together against the warmongers and the profiteers who want to endorse a nuclear industry, because we know this. In any given year, there is a small but tragically growing risk that nuclear weapons will be used. The stockpile will be fired and our planet, our civilization, will be destroyed. And if we hold nuclear weapons for an indefinite amount of time, that small statistical risk in any given year is a certainty over the arc of history. It's a certainty that they will be used. We need to ban the bomb. We need to keep fighting for peace like our lives depend on it, because, in fact, they do. Senator Roberts. Thank you. Ridding the world of nuclear weapons is a laudable goal, and for this reason One Nation will be supporting this matter of urgency. To be consistent, though, I point out that the United Nations has failed at every peace initiative it attempted in the last 77 years. I doubt this initiative will be any different. How will the United Nations achieve compliance from rogue states like North Korea and Iran? Will China be given a free pass on their nuclear weapons in the same manner the UN gives China a free pass on complying with 2050 carbon dioxide targets? I would love Australia to be treated the same as China is being treated on net zero. Imagine the lights that would be kept on in Australia, the jobs and prosperity that could be saved. The UN has given China a free pass on labour camps, yet had the hide to turn up in Queen Vienne just down the road last week to expect our prisons for human rights abuse. Humanity has not seen a world war since 1945. The United Nations did not do that. Nuclear weapons as a deterrent to war did that. Yet nuclear weapons have served their purpose. Future wars will be served with robots and drones, not nuclear weapons. Uranium is better used as a powerful source, a wonderful source of electrical power, not military power. While passing this treaty is one thing, implementing it is quite another. If this treaty does pass, then the United Nations must implement the treaty fairly and having mind 
to the need to not change the balance of power amongst nuclear nations. Removing nuclear weapons unevenly from some nations and not others would increase the potential of plunging the world into a nuclear war, the opposite of this treaty's intentions. I wish the UN the wisdom and courage necessary to achieve this objective. Having demonstrated over the last 77 years the complete absence of these qualities, I'm not hopeful. Yet we must try because it's the right thing to do. The world will be better without nuclear weapons, completely without nuclear weapons. We have one flag, we are one community, we are one nation, and the time for nuclear weapons is over. Thank you, Senator Roberts. The question is that the motion moved by Senator McKim be agreed to. Those of that opinion say aye. aye. Those against say no. Aye. I think the ayes have it. Division required. Ring the bells for four minutes. Lock the doors.
The question is that the, the question is that the motion moved by Senator Kim McKim be agreed to. The ayes will move to the right of the chairs and the noes to the left. I appoint Senator Senator McKim. I appoint Senator McKim, teller for the eyes, and Senator Askew, teller for the nose. Senators, there being 14 ayes and 32 noes, the matter is resolved in the negative. <laughs>